Hey, how you doing there? Welcome back to 365 Days Towards Racial Change. My name is Tom Lenz Nyback. We're at day 257 here at Moving Right Along. Uh, moving right along, uh, I'm in the midst of finishing my uh, philosophy degree from the university. Therefore, my the potency, my the attention I want to put into this project has waned uh, considerably uh, compared to the energy I used to be able to put into this, but I am hoping to finish the next hundred or so days uh, at least being understood um, uh, just in the magnitude of this project. Thank you. Welcome newcomers, new subscribers, and uh, after things <laughs> Cool down. Uh, we will see what's going to happen with racial change. If it's if it's going to be anything in the world, uh, what it's what it's supposed to be, all this stuff. But we're going to get to that uh, to find that after this 365 days, and then probably even after I finish up my degree, which won't be until um, the summer is when I'll actually finish class. Got a whole bunch of more hard hurdles to go through, but I won't bore you with the <coughs> micromanaging my life. Uh, we'll just stay on task here. What you know, what we're doing here is just looking at race in America, uh, seeing, looking at history, uh, a lot of factual information. It, it's not a uh, a time to complain about my experiences as a black man, although the that is sprinkled on, but that, that's just the you know, um, seasoning, illustrative material. You know, the bulk of what we're talking about is factual. You know, although Uncle Tom's Cabin is fictional, uh, we get a lot, there's a lot of factual information in there uh, from the fictional account of uh, the life of a slave in America. <clears throat> Uh, with that, I'm concerned with the black mind, how blacks understand their position, if they have, a, you know, if it's a position at all. I, I will talk to uh, many blacks that feel quite content in America, that feel they've been treated fairly and have no reason to complain, have no angst against the system or anything like that. They've done well, always well, and all that and uh, don't see uh, their race as, or their color as intersecting uh, any cause for concern or negativity in America. Not so for me. Um, I, economics has a lot to do with it, uh, I think. You know, if, you, if you moved with some ease in the system, especially economically, well, you're not going to have a whole lot of things to complain about. Uh, I've kind of been to the dregs uh, of what America can dish out and can say honestly that um, there are some challenges there. You know, and because of where I come from, I believe those challenges exist for the affluent black as well as the poor black in America. Conversely, for the white mind, how do white people feel about their position? Their uh, position of favor, ease, uh, moving in the system. Uh, the system is created by European whites. It's for European whites and it is administered uh, by and large by European whites, those with connections uh, to Europe. You know, they, um, they look at commercials for Ancestry.com and DNA.com and stuff like that, but when you see people connected to kings and queens of Europe, dukes and stuff, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, we had a revolutionary war and all that, but you know, we did not. Uh, yeah, it was just building some borders. It wasn't necessarily change in culture. Uh, we looked at um, like the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Well, that's just a good old boys club from England, mostly. <laughs> you know, you had educators and students in that body. You know, signing the Declaration of Independence and working on the Constitution and stuff like that had been educated, trained in England. You know, uh, they, they just got over here, congregated, got greedy, and severed ties, wanted some autonomy uh, from the motherland across the pond. You know, so so white folks. Do they understand the privilege, favor, power uh, that they have, uh, that they inherit, um, uh, that, that, would, that, that would go on perpetuating itself and growing into perpetuity? Uh, is there any sense of conviction uh, to, to, to reconcile some of the, the gross injustices and misdeeds, the domestic terrorism performed against black people in America. You know, I think yesterday I talked about black people need a consistent and uniform identity to get behind uh, and forward into the world. That would help a lot. But I don't see that materializing um, anytime soon. So so what white folks are, in, in a way, uh, kind of off the hook in a lot of respects. You know, we, we had the black folks were unified, seemed to have a banner and an identity back in the 60s, uh, but the message was diluted. We were deflected and got di uh, diverged away from our goals and we settled for civil rights and social integration you know, instead of being empowered in our identity to who we were, to uh, get funding for our schools, for our neighborhoods, and all this stuff. And instead, we integrated out of. You know, it wasn't it wasn't an integration. It wasn't a cross integration. You didn't find white people beating down doors to get into black neighborhoods, black schools, and whatnot. Well, you know, but black people had to go out to integrate. Uh, you know, it's just a very messed up system. And, you know, I, I'm glad Senator Harris is a pre and she appreciates her busing and got her opportunities and all of that. But, you know, Senator Harris, why wasn't your community uh, enriched, built up, funded? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you went out there, but your community, uh, well, was not a priority for, for fixing the fundamental changes that made busing uh, a requirement uh, for you to get educated. You didn't have the, the right education in your community. You had to leave. Well, you know, I'm the same way. You know? Okay, I don't play. Why, why is my home not repaired to the point where it's a self-sustainable. You know? If there are subsidies, grants, and all that stuff, well, then I need, I need to get that. I need not go, like, I need not own a home, but be sleeping over my friend's house in the suburbs every night. I need my damn home fixed. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, and all of us, and that, that's what happened in the 60s, social integration, civil rights, um, symbols of freedom and inclusion and all that, but not, not really. You know, the black neighborhood community was not good enough to invest in, build up, get the infrastructure. You know, you got drugs, violence, guns, <laughs> things like that. You don't find that I could, uh, kind of activity in affluent, secure, quiet, white neighborhoods. 
Financial literacy is important. Get your financial literacy together. Understand how your money works, how to put it away, save it, and be conscious of how things are progressing for you monetarily. I am inspired to do this work by a man named Dr. Paul Anderson. I've read uh, three of his works. He's all over YouTube. Easy man to find. Uh, I've read Black History Reader. How to work questions you never thought to ask. Black labor, white wealth, search for power, and economic justice in Dr. Anderson's national plan to empower black America. Poweronomics. You can find Dr. Anderson at poweronomics.com. Behind me, you see the hashtag us to simple. Check it out and see. Uh, check the black women there to support one another, having their issues addressed. Very important. Check out Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N, you have kind of a black Facebook experience. This is the World Wide Web. If you can't find your flavor or your voice, do what I did. Start your own and see how far you can go. Uh, it'll build some character in you, I guarantee it. Uncle Tom's Cabin is another aspect of racial change, and we are so spending a few days in it. Uh, we're, today we're still in Chapter uh, 33. It's a chapter called Cassie. This is part two. And here we find um, Tom's goodness and security, spirituality. Yeah, it's overflowing. He's just living his life, but other slaves are catching on. You know, and Tom's goodness encourages goodness from this one, and they turn around. And they're good back to Tom. You know, up until that point, McGree's plantation is just a gloomy, sorry, mean place uh, where the strong elbowed the weak out of the way when it was time to cook the evening meal and such. And this is where Tom has uh, has grown up, uh, or Tom not grown up, but Tom has arrived at, and he's. He's having an influence on the plantation. Well, this is not, not going to sit well with Simon Legree because, you know, as right, as ethical, uh, as nice as Tom's character is on the Legree plantation, it's a for, it's still a form of defiance. Legree wants everyone to be at odds. He wants the, to he wants Legree wants to realize the goal of meritorious manumission, which the goal of meritorious manumission is not to set set a slave free. It's a, to encourage the slave to be at odds with other slaves. It's to cause division, strife, mistrust. That degree likes that. You, know, you can handle that you know, because they're, they're, they stay a disorganized mob. But if they start having family and community and connection and, and uh, bonding and whatnot, that's going to be a problem. You know, that, that encourages uh, sediment, uh, you know, feelings uh, of community, and that, that can, turn, can turn violent, spark a revolt, uh, X, Y, Z, all of the above. You know, so Simon Legree does not like that. Uh, about Tom, which we're going to see. Um, that spirituality, that damn Jesus, is, uh, is not, Simon Degree does not want to tolerate that, doesn't want it anywhere near him, because it only spells trouble in the end. We find Sambo and Quimbo anxious to begin Tom's conditioning and education. You know, that we left them yesterday at the scale that they're getting their cotton weighed. Um, Sambo is right next to Simon McGree, complaining about Tom, complaining about Lucy, is not having sex with him, and all this. McGree is already um, wary and We're very concerned about, paranoid about 
Tom's behavior. You know, he, he saw Tom. Oh, uh, to be to be a Sambo and Quimbo, an overseer of the place. Tom's obviously honest, trustworthy, a teetotaler, a lot of good stuff there. Character and stuff that Legree likes. But Legree wants that under his stuff. But, but Tom has an allegiance to something greater than Legree, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, today. Uh, so Sambo, you know, he's complaining, and I bet you he's a, like, when he complains to Legree, I bet you it's, it's a thick kind of nasty type of complaining that even grates on Legree, but you know, Legree needs to tolerate this because Sambo, because of Sambo's position that, that Legree created. And uh, <clears throat> so Sambo's complaining, uh, and, you know, he, he finishes up by complaining about Susie. So Legree was like, oh yeah, we'll give her a good beating or something. Uh, but, but he doesn't want to chill up the whole plantation of errant slaves because um, it's the high season, high time for cotton picking. You know, that uh, that green bowl has burst open and that white gold is inside. And he, he needs as many hands as he can at it. In, in Harriet Beecher Stowe's book, this, this version I have, There's a lot of uh, illustrations of pictures. One picture they have is of a family uh, of black folks, you know, and it includes children. Everybody's got a little sack on their side, tied to their side. That there, you know, that's how you pick the cotton and stuff, right? I used to pick blueberries, and you pick blueberries. You tie a can to the front of you, and you roll them berries. <laughs> off the best you can. Uh, so even children are pressed into service at harvest time when it comes to the plantation. So Simon Legree doesn't want to he doesn't want to start damaging his property when he needs all hands on deck out there in the field. Uh, he, he's intense, he's you know he's saying thank you well I'll use Tom. This will be Tom's first test at absolute loyalty to me. And he, um, so he's considering Tom. Now, he's, this is twofold. Right? He wants to get Tom obedient and start conditioning Tom to be as mean to the slaves as Legree is. But that doesn't, that does, that's not going to sit well with Tom. Oh, excuse me, as we'll see. But this, it's said twofold because he knows, you know, initially Tom may kind of take it easy on Lucy as he's going to be pressed into this service. And he, uh, he's anxious to see old Tom uh, perform this, but he knows Tom is not going to, like, beat her down as maybe Sambo, Quimbo, or Legree himself would. You know. So that's a scale. Everyone's coming across the scale with their quotas. You know, even Lucy has a quota, but how does she get her quota? Tom has been helping her all day. And Legree knows it, he doesn't like it. So even though she's got her quota, the scale is showing, excuse me, her weight in uh, cotton, Reese, yeah, still rebukes her, chastises her, tells her to stand to the side. Yeah. He's going to call her out. Uh, in the meantime, Cassie is there, and she's showing uh, some resistance to the green. You know, her basket's overflowing, pressed down. You know, it's full of cotton. You know, you know, she, it's, it's, you know it's, uh, something's going on between them. You know, she, uh, Cassie is Agrees, sexual concubine, slave concubine, whatever. 
and so she sleeps up in the house and all this stuff. And, but you know, so their relationship is complicated. You know, sexuality does things to people, even the meanest people, and to uh, some degree, there's something, some kind of bonding has happened where the greed can't be outright, an outright bastard to her. She knows it, uh, yet she's still under his control. He knows it, and so they've got this thing <laughs> going on. Uh, something she does at the scale angers the greed, and he's, he's, he's gonna, ah! but she, she looks at him defiantly. And um, he can't can't bring himself to finish coming the blows against uh, Cassie. So Cassie goes moves off. Um, now agrees. He he gets his composure and he says, "Okay, Tom, my boy, you know, I'm sure it's presented to Tom very." Enthusiastically, you know, with good humor behind it. You know. he's, he's offering the whip to Tom to flog Lucy because he, he knows there's been cheating going on at the scale. Someone's helped Lucy and things like that. Tom says, Nah, I, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to be another slave. I'll work. I'll work in the field till I die. And I'll be obedient. And stuff like that to my own hurt, but I will not, under any circumstances, be another slave. You know, and he's talking about, he, you know, he's got some character. You know, he is a slave, mother, but the humanity of people is inescapable. Either you have it or you don't. There's, it's one of those things where an individual isn't on the sidelines. So, are just haters of life and want to see the world burn. Other people uh, recognize the humanity and others uh, of the right of life to living things. You know, and Tom says, "No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that." And uh, <laughs> this makes Simon the Greek fly into utter rage. So he hits Tom with a whip, he beats him about the head with his, um, with his fist, you know, this calloused fist that he's been knocking black people around with. Uh, to, to knocks Tom around. He's probably talking about it. He's knocking Tom around about all this stuff. Uh, until Simon Marie gets tired of knocking Tom around. And uh, Tom, the, Agrees, panting. Tom gets his composure, wipes some of the blood off his face, and he holds his ground. And, uh, says, no, whatever. You know, is that all you got? Is <laughs> almost the attitude from Tom. And then Agrees, like, you know, look, the Bible says the slaves obey their masters. Now, see, this is the this is the illusion, right? The, this slave. Now, I'm in philosophy right now, and this slave-master relationship is not a... It's not in the realm of tangible things that you have to live by. Uh, these are derived relationships, power and control dynamic, right? And so, <clears throat> the slave obey your master for one thing, that's the wrong interpretation from the text, from the Bible. I'm not going to go long into that, but that's not that's not the purpose of the text, and things like that. But it is one of the tools of manipulation for white slave masters in America at the time. Um, so Marie appeals to that, you know. S still no affirmative response from Tom. The Greek goes, look, I paid $1,200 for your black butt. That's you, I own you, and all stuff. Another derived relationship, just buying human beings and stuff. Um, 
long discussion. I, maybe I should put that on my list of topics about how we derive these power and control dynamics. They don't exist. They're not real things in the world as the, as the way they were treated by uh, white slave masters and black slaves in that the in the day. And that was about that was the that was Tom's breaking point. Finally he utters, finally his defiance comes out because Tom's uh, idea of uh, ownership and slave ship is is one of submission to God and uh, being bought by the blood and some of those traditional uh, Judeo Christian uh, ideas, you know, he says, you know, I'm, I'm bought with something much more valuable than you've ever put on the table for me. And what, what was purchased, uh, purchased my soul, is Tom's response. Legree is exasperated. He's in a rage. He's near his own breaking point. <clears throat> and, uh, and that was it, you know. And so, Legree probably he knows this has been coming because he saw times Tom's Bible, Tom's behavior out in public and stuff like that. You know. and so Legree's got to be oh, the, a black slave that 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 like believes that stuff. You know, got to break him down first. Uh, so this chapter ends with uh, Legree leaves Tom in the hands of Sambo and Quimbo, and, and uh, Sambo and Quimbo are on each side of Tom. They escort Tom out. There's no resistance from Tom, but Tom is not going to be not going to defy his relationship and his. Idea of God and, and whatnot. <clears throat> He's going to hold on uh, to that inner core belief because you know you can't take that away. You know? he, his body is forfeit in this world at this time and everything. But uh, you start scratching at his relationship with God and such, and you're going to have to fight on your hands. Got some issues uh, to deal with. You do, You're not Tom, because that kind of thing is fixed. It's made up in Tom's mind. He's, there's no occasion, reason for him to uh, back away from his position. He's that way yesterday. Tom is that way today. And it's probably a good, uh, probably bet some money that Tom's going to be that way tomorrow. If you start uh, messing with how he defines himself and his relationship to the God he believes in. That's day 257 out of the way. Come back and join me tomorrow. We'll see what we can get into. These are pre recorded. Uh, so I kind of positioned this to push us into the weekend where I'm finally going to have, I'm going to anticipate some time to uh, dig deeper into some stuff. I've had some other responsibilities that overlap as I transition to schooling, but I finally cleared my schedule out. So uh, I'll to balance this out a little more and we're going to get into some other things beside Uncle Tom's Cabin. This is moving along quite well. We're almost done the book. Uh, but there's a lot of other topics to get with. Uh, a good friend of mine even gave me some more another resource that I want to look at to see if there's room to insert some, uh, some conversations from that resource here. So, uh, so stay tuned. Just keep coming back. You know, this is a whole new thing. It's a brand new year. This is one that you're, you're getting it, the raw material as it unfolds. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome, new subscriber, new, new newcomer. I'm Thomas Nyback. That's day 257 
out of the way of 365 days towards racial change. Come back tomorrow. Let's see what we can get into, okay?